Good morning. Today I thought we'd talk about what the Fairness Doctrine was and what happened to the Fairness Doctrine. Because I've worked at a few media companies in my day and none of them strike me as that fair, even as they have it in their slogan. So what was the Fairness Doctrine? Well, it was a set of rules and regulations put forth by the federal government to replace an even older rule called the Mayflower Rule. I'm not making that up. The Mayflower Law. That's how old this bloody thing is. We called it the Mayflower Law. And the Mayflower Law was essentially an outright ban on political discussion on public radio. That was really the only kind of broadcast news at the time, up until television. And the United States government took a pretty hard line. That, uh, on the public airwaves, you couldn't be discussing politics news. We're going to keep that funny business right out. Because yes, you could read information off of a wire, but any sort of editorializing on radio, no go. And when television came around, a couple big companies had enough money and infrastructure to launch their own channels. You were kind of NBCs or CBSs, but because there were only a few, and they basically had monopolies, the government said, mm, well, we don't want you know, these, these companies to just wield too much influential political power. But at the same time, outright banning political discussion actually wasn't the best approach with this Mayflower rule on the, on the public public airwaves for radios, let's change it up. So what we're gonna do, instead of saying you cannot discuss politics at all, NBC, CBS, you can discuss politics, you can have political shows, but you gotta give equal time and you gotta give equal airing to different political ideologies. And on top of that, you have to give time to issue-oriented citizens. That was the exact words. So that even if you had a William F. Buckley and a Gore Vidal on, and you say, oh, we're having a, a liberal person and a Republican person, you could still be in violation, NBC or CBS could still be in violation of the Fairness Doctrine if they also ignored these issue-oriented citizens. So even if Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley were arguing about the Vietnam War... Pro-crypto-Nazi uh, I can think of is yourself. Uh, stop Sadly, calling me a crypto-Nazi. Let's, let's stop calling I'll names you in your goddamn face. Let's even if Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley were arguing about the Vietnam War, if, for instance, the civil rights movement was going on in the background and NBC News just wanted to not cover it for whatever reason, they would be in violation of doing so, in violation of the Fairness Doctrine by doing so, because there would be a group, an activist group, that says, hey, this is a newsworthy thing. And it would compel NBC News or CBS to also talk about other events, political, current news events, that would be affecting the consumer electorate. They would be, they'd be watching NBC, CBS. And this lasted up until around the 1980s. That was the kind of prevailing law in broadcast journalism. And in the 1980s, during Ronald Reagan he decided to repeal it. You know, I'm simplifying it as to do with the FCC and the Supreme Court, but essentially under the Ronald Reagan administration, they decided to, to abolish the Fairness Doctrine. And they did this for a few reasons. They say, they claim, as every politician claims, that they do it out of principle, that you know, the electrons that flow from the television shows the equal form of freedom of speech as the newspapers that we read, blah, 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 blah. Arguably, they did this because in the 1980s, we start to see the rise of cable news when it was no longer just seeing the big old antennas and three television stations. You saw the rise of cable news, CNN, the MSNBCs. There's many more channels and now many more options for a, a consumer, a television consumer. And therefore, there was more ability, there's less of a monopoly with NBC or CBS. So more channels, more options. The consumer can now choose and hear different voices and different opinions. And the Re Reagan administration recognized this, perhaps with some lobbying, Nonetheless, they repealed the Fairness Doctrine, and that only accelerated the growth in cable news channels. That's why we have the CNBCs, the MSNBCs, the Fox News, the CNNs, we have the, and the Bloomberg's, the analyst news channels, all with their unique little niche take on the news. So, Ronald Reagan administration was the one that appealed the Fairness Doctrine. And they did it out of this principled idea that, well, you know, it's for freedom of speech, there should be ABC, NBC should be able to discuss whatever they want. But all, really what happened was that cable news came around and now there was a plethora of channels. There was no longer monopoly. There was less concern that NBC and CBS alone would dominate uh, how an electorate should think or feel about any issue. There are two other interesting aspects of the Fairness Doctrine that outlasted the Ronald Reagan administration. So the corollary rules of the Fairness Doctrine was the personal attack rule, which is a very interesting rule that most people don't know about, and lasted really up until Bush, the Bush 2000 election. And the personal attack rule was thus. It said any time a broadcast journalism organization made a personal attack on an individual, private or public, that individual, you know, you know this 
flaming communist socialist or this crypto fascist Nazi you were saying this on broadcast journalism, even though it wasn't the, the anchor there saying it all seriously, but you brought on some guests and he you know called somebody a you know, communist pig. That person who had just been called the communist pig had to be notified under the personal attack rule. They had to be sent a transcript of exactly what was said to them. And then they had to be offered an option to come on the air and offer a rebuttal. Actually, not a bad rule. I thought, I'm personally still maybe a fan of this personal attack rule. That lasted up until the 2000s when eventually the FCC stopped enforcing that as well. And which is why when you watch CNN these days or Fox News, you just get relentless personal attacks with no rebuttal. The other corollary rule was the editorializing, which was that up until basically 2000, a lot of times you see the New York Times has come out and endorsed, or the Washington Post has come out and endorsed this presidential candidate. Well, up until the 2000s, what happened was if a newspaper or a broadcast organization wanted to endorse a specific candidate, they had to notify the other candidate and then offer airtime to that candidate to respond. So there you go. That is the fairness doctrine in a nutshell. It was a, a law that set the precedent for early broadcast television journalism, replacing the Mayflower Law, which was for radio. <laughs> Fairness doctrine lasted up until the Ronald Reagan age, at which point they repealed it. It became the Wild West of cable news. And now we live in the world we do today. We're turning on the television as a bit like going to the carnival. Where each news channel has their own little tent, carnival barking, oh, come on inside, let me offer you the gossip and news of today. Hopefully you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Click like, subscribe. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.